Do you want to? Re yeah, well, you know, just to just to have more of a visual experience. Do you want to record this one naked? <laughs> Society's family unit is in crisis as less and less people are making the commitment of a lifelong partnership together. It has been normalized, encouraged, and easier than ever to just throw in the towel when the going gets tough. With time and a premium, start by spending 20 minutes per week gaining thought-provoking inspiration towards a journey of self-improvement, ultimately improving your marriage, your family, your health, and your home. We've talked about being a protector and a provider, but what is another important role to consider? That role is the leader or presider role. Why is this role so important? What does it mean to be a presider of your home or family? We want to provide a compelling discussion today that makes you evaluate your priorities while we share vital tips into how to have a thriving family. Welcome to another episode of the Family Order Podcast. Today we're going to talk about being a presider of your family. This is the third episode of a three-part series on strong roles that are held by the leaders of the household. Last episode revolved on being a provider, and this episode is about being a leader. So what does it mean to preside over your family? It means leadership in many different facets. You will be expected to lead your family, your coworkers, and your community at some point in your life. Men have traditionally been considered the head or leader of the household. This is where the term patriarch comes from. The president presides over the country. Hopefully. Don't get political. <laughs> a judge presides over a courtroom. A supervisor presides over their office or their employees. You get the point. Parents need to preside over their family because they provide stewardship and guidance. Fathers provide this role less and less these days with portrayals of the modern father to be a witless wonder or at best another child that the mother or wife must care for. Nothing drives me more up the wall than to see a husband, father, or a man that isn't leading or even participating in leading their families. Women have had to assume that role. So this might be controversial, but we need fathers and husbands and men in general, honestly, to step up. Women need to make decisions too, and we aren't saying that the leader of the family makes all the decisions. The father and mother are equal partners with different roles in the leadership of the family unit. And I think we need everybody to step up, mothers, fathers, uh, you name it. There's a lot of pressure out there with many different things going on out in this crazy world we live in. Everyone needs to step up. Our families, our kids, they need leadership. So what makes us qualified to talk about this topic? Well, honestly, it comes from experience of doing it the wrong way. Exactly. Full disclosure, I haven't always fulfilled the three roles that we've already mentioned. Providing, protecting, and presiding. I can confidently look back and admit that I wasn't fully aware of these roles and I wasn't working on them. I've said this before. We can always improve, but I certainly have made the most progress in leading the family of all the roles that I've had. What does this actually look like? Well, it's about having a vision and setting direction. We actually took the time last year during COVID, we were at home, we might as well, <laughs> take the time to sit down and decide what is our family all about? What do we want to do? Where do we want to go? How do we want to get there? What does it mean to be a bill you? Right. And have a vision for our family and decide to honestly be intentional. We sit down and we formalize a set of values that we have chosen that are what we're about and what we're going to teach our kids. What do we want them to really learn and be able to stand on firmly mm -hmm. as they try to deal with all this chaos out there as they grow up? Because let's be honest, life is going to get more complicated and it's going to continue to speed up and be far more confusing than what we grew up with. 
We have made significant changes in our past when I wasn't leading. There's things in our past like making a major move to a different city for different opportunities. This could also be buying a house, investing in something big. It could be about taking a big trip. Check out our RV family trip episode. (laughs) And it could be about something as small and simple as a date night. Make a decision, guys. Set direction and lead. Being a leader, let's make no bones about this. Being a leader is hard in any sense of the role. Being a leader isn't always popular and it involves hard work. And you're not going to make everybody happy. I don't know if that's talked about enough. We'll get deeper into this topic in, in a second, but remember that we don't have equal roles in our household. Allie's the lead cook, the lead educator of the kids, and she still finds time to bring home some bacon. I'm the lead provider financially, a Mr. Fix-It around the house, including most of the dirty jobs uh, that that entails, and the official lifter of the heavy stuff. (laughs) And I also lead our family. This doesn't mean Allie doesn't know how to use power tools. She actually really (laughs) enjoys them, uh, when she has the opportunity, that is. But... She often does have trouble opening her martini shaker, and I'm happy to be the strongman there to save the day. Yes, that's why I keep you around. Right. That's why you put up with me. (laughs) So parents need to be providers, but it's also about creating value and opportunities. You provide financially, but the job doesn't stop there. You also provide stability and consistency in your family's life. Be the rock or the foundation to build upon. We have a fairly traditional structure and typical roles in our family, if we're being honest. So Ben is kind of the compass that provides direction and vision and leadership and so on. So he's also the anchor of our family. And he's the steady rock who remains strong in tough situations or when I've fly off the handle and (laughs) want to move to another country and want to move to another country yes and anxiety (laughs) and and ocd overwhelm me at times but we both can provide protect and lead and hopefully by now we've connected the dots on these three crucial roles for you Mm -hmm. we both provide energy i don't know about me energy but we both provide energy (laughs) when you're in a good mood And you've had your 10 hours of sleep. Yes. And discipline. I'm probably a little bit better at discipline (laughs) when the other is in a bad spot. So there's overlap to our episodes on providing and protection, but we certainly do provide those roles, whether we're aware of it or not. As far as presider goes, why am I so passionate about this topic? Without going on too much of a rant. (laughs) There are several examples of guys that I have in our immediate circle that are not leading their family, especially not the way that Ben is leading our family. I see it all the time, even in our immediate tribe. I feel like guys are typically more equipped to be the leader, but why aren't they? So guys are more equipped to be the leader of the family because they're they're less emotional, generally speaking. Generally. <laughs> so they typically think more logically and more consistent on, you know, day-to-day things. But women are kind of overbearing that and pushing men down. And this kind of goes back to our feminist versus femininity episode, if you haven't listened to that yet, that... It's just not the same that it used to be. And women are just overbearing men entirely too much and not letting them take on their natural role of leading. And men are allowing this to happen, too. So this isn't just on the women. We've known women that actually really respect when their man stands up and says, no, we're Mm -hmm. not doing that politely. You know, you you lead with with some compassion you lead with love you don't do it from a place of trying to beat your chest and and dominate and you don't give in when she pouts about it right (laughs) right (laughs) and and that's the point though that being a leader isn't always about what's easy guys don't typically have as many rules they don't have as many standards 
they they really don't care as much, but they also don't seem to want to rock the boat. And they want to just play nice, go along to get along. But pretty soon it starts to become apparent that they're not really engaged. They just are kind of doing what they're told. Sorry, I think exactly. you were continuing I mean, your point. Well, and it, it, additionally, men need to build themselves and mm-hmm. they need to become valuable by learning skills and by contributing more than just financially. You are not right. just a workhorse that goes yeah. and makes money for me to spend every day. Like, there's other skills that you've acquired that contribute to this household. So I also don't think that a lot of wives and mothers like to be leaders either because they don't like the criticism that comes along with it. Right. <laughs> they like to make everybody happy. Yeah, exactly. Which is, which is noble and, and it, that, that serves a purpose too. Yeah, you have to be willing to make mistakes, but also to bear the brunt of making unpopular decisions for the greater good, whether... For some examples for us, whether that be how we discipline our children, how we Mm -hmm. schedule our children, how we homeschool our children, even, you know, the political and social issues that we educate our children on, our stance on those. Those have come with some criticism and some pushback from even some of the people that we love the most. But you know what? Yeah. It's our family and we're going to do it the way we want to. Absolutely. And I've learned the most from the presiding role, as I started to mention before, I wasn't presiding over the family in the past, and I learned over time that Allie was looking for me to lead. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't explicitly say that, and I don't even think she was I don't consciously even think I thinking knew. that. Yeah. You needed me to step Everybody up. Everybody watches Leave It to Beaver, but nobody knows <laughs> how they actually get to that point. <laughs> right, we're still trying. Darn it. We're, we're going to make it. But you needed me to step up, right? You don't want to make all the decisions. You don't want to have to do all the research and do all the work. It makes my brain hurt. No matter how type A and OCD you may be, <laughs> you may protest sometimes. You may not be happy with it. You may try to get your way. But in the end, I need to know what's best for the family, not selfishly what I want, but what's best in the end, take the emotion out of it, and also the inconsistencies because you change your mind yeah. every time the wind blows. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's great because you're more spontaneous and that provides value too. But there are times when it comes to making decisions for the family, somebody needs to be steady and do what's right. But you really don't like making all the decisions. I don't. I hate making decisions. You, you really you, you don't even like to do it with deciding what to order off the menu. No. Uh, when we go out to eat so uh (laughs) but we we absolutely are great at collaborating Mm -hmm. and working together we can always tell when that's not working too well it's pretty obvious we collaborate on a lot of things whether it's work like Mm -hmm. literally our jobs right or whether it's a house project or you know if you're having trouble with something that you're doing, Mm -hmm. you bring me in. We really do enjoy collaborating. Even if we just kind of bounce it off each other, I'm not really looking for, for you to solve this for me. Yeah, You're not looking for approval from me or anything like that. I mean, you're going to do what works best. (laughs) And we've tried to do that as much as possible because we really enjoy it. But at the end of the day, you really want to follow my lead. And Mm -hmm. that takes trust. That takes consistency. You need to feel safe and secure with that. You want to come along for that ride, but you need to know that I'm going I'm, I'm going somewhere and I'm taking us somewhere. Yeah. We're not just sitting here coasting. And if nothing else, if no one's leading, just step up and take the lead. Honestly, make a decision. That's the point here. And it definitely seems like wives and mothers are taking the lead since men really aren't in many cases. I know there are exceptions out there. But many of them don't seem to really enjoy it. Sure, they may criticize. They may make comments. But it does seem like when it really comes down to it, they don't want to make all the big decisions. Mm -hmm. Right? They want to be involved. Absolutely. You've got to communicate. So many men these days are just a paycheck. Mm -hmm. They go to work. They make the paycheck. They're just a plow horse. They come home and move along with their evening. They just, they sit and wait for you to... Tell them what to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And they work hard. They think that's the only thing they need to do other than bring home a paycheck. Mm -hmm. And they're more than happy to do it because they can just shut their brain off and just just work hard, right? 
Um, but guys definitely seem to check out. They go play their video games, they watch their sports, they get distracted with all these other things that are entertaining. And don't get me wrong, they're alluring, they're they're fun. But plan a date night. Pick out the movie for movie night. Choose where you're going for dinner and actually make recommendations on the next vacation. Those types of things. Get involved. Get engaged. Well, and to that point, if you are excited about something... It makes me excited about it. So if you take the lead Mm -hmm. and you're like, hey, honey, I think that we should go to this restaurant. They have this and this and this (laughs) that I think you would like. Right. But they also have 90 different whiskeys that I would like, (laughs) you know, type of (laughs) like. And it makes me happy that you found something not only that you enjoy, but you also thought about me in the process. Mm As a man, you should be the leader in your home, for the most part, and for your family or community. You need to be emotionally strong and stable yourself first. That's the trick. Lead your kids and make sure you're right with yourself first. Lead your wife as well. I didn't say dominate, but help by leading. Make some decisions and make sure that things are getting done. Don't just do what you're told and... Like we said, there's a lot of men feel like they're walking on eggshells. They don't ever want to get in trouble with their wife, be in the doghouse. It's not like I take you out back and whip you. No, (laughs) that's the thing. I. (laughs) What are you? What are these men so afraid of? I don't know. (laughs) You're the bigger and stronger one in most cases too. By the way, if it ever did really come down to that, maybe it's a legal thing. I don't know. What are you so like? If you say no to me, like, what are you so afraid? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, you're not going to get laid. You can't threaten me with what I don't already get. (laughs) Be confident enough to get stuff done. That's what we're Mm -hmm. saying. You can't just check out and sit on your butt and go watch a show, play a game, or just peruse social media. The wife can certainly be a leader as well, and that's totally fine. That's not what we're saying. It can all just depend on the situation, too. Who's going to be more of the lead parent? Who's providing financially? etc. To be a good leader, you have to lead yourself first. I want to hammer that home. This requires for you to have built credibility, trust, and develop strong communication skills. All of these things take time and effort to develop. Yeah, they're just but they are definitely crucial. not just overnight. I no. mean, this has been years in the making for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. It's not overnight. It's not mm-hmm. easy. Don't be discouraged by that. Mm-hmm. Right. The fact that it takes time. <laughs> it, it, and you'll see the gains in it over time as you step up little by little. You'll notice that you're getting better at communicating the things that need to get done. You know, hey, we, I want to do this. Here's why. Here's what I need to do it. But your consistency, your follow through, doing what you say you're going to do, that builds credibility. I don't have to convince Allie that this is the right thing to do every time mm-hmm. because she trusts me. Mm-hmm. Because I haven't led us astray. Right? That doesn't mean you don't make mistakes. We all make mistakes. But by God, she would rather have somebody that freaking tries Mm -hmm. than just sits around and plays it safe all the time. Because you're never going to get anywhere doing that. One area that we are working on improving is staying the course and being consistent in moments of weakness. Like ice cream? Absolutely. (laughs) We're all guilty of this. It, it, It just depends on your situation. But... Remember that the strongest of leaders, they don't give in when things get tough. They keep going. Or if they fall off, you get right back up on that horse and you start down the Mm -hmm. path again. Because we're all going to get kicked in the teeth. We're all going to get knocked off track. You got to get back on it. But a strong leader will take you to the promised land. And what's funny is sometimes the hardest path is what leads us to the grandest riches. At the very least, it will make it taste that much sweeter. The call to order this week is to further define your roles in the household and particularly with presiding. Who is leading the family and making final decisions? This needs to be defined and communicated. Have family meetings, plan for your future, and set goals. This requires being intentional and following through. The place to start is by casting a vision to plot a course for your family. It will take time and work, but it pays dividends as you build momentum. If you're ready for your marriage and family dynamic to thrive and not just survive, all it takes is 20 minutes or less joining us each week. 
It begins with a journey of self-improvement while you sit in the carpool lane, commute to work, squeeze in a workout, or get halfway through folding that laundry pile. Be sure to check out the blog at thefamilyorder.com and follow us on social media at The Family Order. If you're ready to start your journey, be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss new episodes every Monday.